Do you have to type phone numbers from time to time, which are manually keying the phone number in with the parentheses and the space and the dash that's needed? I'm going to teach you how to auto format a range of fields to receive U.S. phone numbers and save you typing time so you don't have to type those extra characters. Here's how it works. I've set up a small spreadsheet for you to demonstrate how it works. This phone number I typed in manually. One, after we format for the range that we are going to be putting phone numbers into, we can format for a special type of format called phone number. But this one was manually typed in. And when you manually type in a telephone number with the parentheses and the space, that type of thing, it sees this as a text field or general field and it's, and it's left aligned. And the reason why I'm bringing that to your attention is because when you go back to format the ones that we want to put phone numbers in, it's going to be right aligned. More about that in a moment. Right now, this was manually typed in. What we want to do is keep from having to type in that open, close paren, that space between, and that dash. And this is how it works. If you know uh, which range is going to receive uh, phone numbers, then you would pre-select them. Now, I'm going to include the one I've already typed because what if Loretta's number changes and I have to come back and edit it? I want it to be formatted as a phone number and not, I don't want it to be looked upon as text by Excel because I want it to have the right alignment because values are always right aligned and anything interpreted as text is always left aligned. I'm going to go ahead and select that, the, that cell and the remaining cells. And for you to format with this phone number format uh, type, you could just right click. So when I right click, I can format for numbers from by choosing format cells and get to this format dialog box. But I want you to also know how to do this from the ribbon. With the range selected from the home ribbon, you have a group of tools expressly for numbers, such as dates, time, percentages, etc. By clicking the dialog box launcher in the lower right corner, it's an arrow, and that's the official name for what it does. When you click, that's one way. There's at least three ways to get to the same place. So here I am back to the format sales dialog box. I just came from it to it from a different way. It defaults to giving you the categories of formatting for numbers. That's what we want. But as you look through this list, there is no, there's no option for a phone number. It's because that comes under the category of numbers for formatting called special. When you click special, the right-hand side of the screen changes and there are four special types that you can use. And this has been around for a very long time in Excel. And it's just, it's, a, it's often overlooked. And I think it's often overlooked because it's not expressly stated in the category list as a phone number. It's considered a special category. And we're interested in the one for phone number. After you choose phone number and click on OK, any range you have selected is now formatted to receive this format. And the first one I had already typed, but again, that was manual. This time I'm going to type another phone number, another fictitious phone number, and that's just going to string it together, no typing those characters in space. Or our fictitious phone uh, area code. And I'm going to press the enter key. And there it is. See how though it's right aligned? Because previously I had manually done this and it left aligned it. It interpreted it as, as text. But all of these, of course, you can go back and delete that and retype the number so that you have that um, consistency or you can just manually right align it. But from right here, going forward, for Michael, if you type in a number, it's going to be formatted for phone number. Now, here's a power tip for you if you're taking notes. If, you know, in the real world, we have big spreadsheets. This is a sample for learning purposes. But in a spreadsheet where you have lots of names and, and 
you're going to, you know that spreadsheet's going to continue to grow with the names and phone numbers you are tracking. If you had to, if you had to add 10 more people to this phone number list, then once you get through with Michael Willis, which we, we formatted for, if I add any more you know, records, let's say I have to go all the way down here, Excel does not work on inheritance. So at this point, you're getting a power tip, a very important power tip. Excel doesn't work on inheritance. I pre-formatted this range. Anything below that is not going to receive that automatic phone number. But here is your power tip. You need to understand that Excel works with a different uh, structure whenever you format your data to work as a table. Then you overcome that default behavior of it not inheriting the formatting for any future new records. Tables are a topic all their own, but you're going to get a lot out of this one power tip. But that's a subject all its own, which when I teach tables, which is a very important tool to use in Excel, a feature. But to do this automatically, without any pre-training of all the ins and outs of what tables can do for you, as long as there's no column breaks in the data you want to, want to convert and no row breaks, then simply click a cell within the data you have so far, which is what I'm doing, and press the control key and the letter T, T for table. That brings up a box that says create table. It has It is showing you what the range is that has identified that you want a table. It assumes that that table has its own headers. All of this is correct. And when you click on OK, this is now a table that is pre-formatted with default colors. But notice that you have a table design ribbon here. That's why I'm saying this is a topic all its own. Right now, your focus is how do I overcome the fact that I'm going to be adding 20 more records and I don't want to have to keep going back and formatting the range for the new records for the phone number. Now, at this point, and of course, um, Michael was always always was already formatted. I'll go ahead and do another number. That was, that was already formatted. And see this one, see, this is the new record. Without this being a table, it would not pick up the uh, format of the phone number. And I'll go ahead and type in a, a name here. And I'm going to type in a number. You notice how it's also keeping the formatting of every other row. A color, one more number. And that's just going to continue. And one more here. See how the table's operating? It's keeping your formatting as you go along. But as I said, tables is a topic all its own. If your team is interested in learning more about Excel, specifically, say, the table design, then I suggest you subscribe to my newsletter, which is on my website. I mention it in the description of this tutorial. And then when I do a webinars to the general public, the, you will be notified, or you can notify me via email if you're wanting team training. Hey, I hope this, this tip helped you out. It's certainly going to save you time in those times when you have to type a lot of phone numbers. Stay tuned for more tips and tutorials. If you're not, if you have not subscribed to my channel, I suggest you do, because then when I upload more videos, you will be notified. Thanks for watching, and if you found this tip helpful, I'd like to know if you have the time to say.